The End of the World podcast is brought to you by absolutely nobody. We don't have any commercial sponsors, and we don't accept contributions, and we don't have a Patreon page, so we're not going to send you over there and ask you to subscribe and offer you something chintzy in return for your subscribing. No thanks. Just please listen, and I'm Glenn Fleetwood. I'm your host, and if you could... If you got anything out of this of any value, or if you listen to this and you do get something out of it, please drop down below and give me a thumbs up. That does help a lot. That helps a lot of other people find out the existence of the End of the World podcast. And if you can subscribe, that would be absolutely fantastic. Those are the only things I ask you to do. Those are both free. They don't cost you anything, and you will get nothing in the mail about subscribing, anything of the sort. And... With that, I just want to say that today's episode is uh, uh, an amalgam. (laughs) Today's episode is going to be 10 things that you can do in this new uh, wacky civilization. 10 things that you can do today that will save your life. Now, these are not things you've already heard. I know that you don't want to hear one more person saying, wash your hands. There's nothing today about washing your hands. Uh, You're not going to hear anything today about you have to stay Six feet away because the air... No, we're not going to get into that. I know you've heard that every other place. There's every, you, you hear that everywhere. I'm going to give you 10 very solid suggestions that really could save your life that you can do today. And these are 10 things that nobody else has told you you should be doing except me, if you've been what, reading me on Facebook or Twitter or wherever. But... Other than myself, I don't see anybody putting forward these 10 suggestions. It looks like in coming up with the 10, and I mentioned this during the show, uh, I think I come up with about another 9 or 10 we could do a second show on. So that might just be what we're going to do next week. But because the circumstances change so rapidly, it looks like the next show may only be Monday or Tuesday. It might not even go till right now. I'm going to have you join the show. Uh, enjoy it. If you have any comments or criticisms, my email, it should be listed down below, but it's D-U-I-L-A-W-Y-R at packbell.net. I'm sorry for all the uhs. It makes me crazy when I listen to it, but I'm going to try and scoop most of them out for you. And here's the show. Hello. And welcome to my podcast, the End of the World Podcast. That sounds like a good way to drive people away who are not going to listen. I'm Glenn Fleetwood. I'm an attorney in Los Angeles in California. And uh, this is your show for Saturday the 28th. And today's show has got a uh, title that if it doesn't grab you, nothing will. It is 10 Things That You Can Do Today That Will Save Your Life in This uh, Apocalypse, you should say. The important thing to remember about it is that the uh, no nobody else is going to be telling you any of these ten. I have not heard anybody else say anything about the, these ten items other than me. Yes, they did get me thrown out of a different chat room, but uh, let's ju- let's just get right into it, should, shall we? Okay, one of the first ones we're going to ha- talk about is going to be about cleanliness, and I think it's actually number one and number. But let's start with keeping your personal body clean. When I say clean, I'm not just talking about taking a shower. What I'm really referring to is if you've got any cuts, if you have worse yet an infection, if you have a bleeding sore or something like that, you have to right now start taking super care of it. You cannot put that off because none of us, not me, not you, can take the risk that what is a small problem today will exacerbate and force us to need a doctor's intervention because there's going to be no doctors to intervene. Uh, there may be no doctors now. I'm not saying that's a something in the future only. That could be the case today. I haven't been to any of the emergency rooms, the one closest here, Rancho Conejo is the name, and there are varying descriptions of whether you can get in there to see a doctor if you don't have coronavirus. But the point to get to today is that you want to do everything possibly can to make sure you don't need a doctor. So just, you've got time. Go about your body, your kids' bodies, your partner's bodies, and make sure that if they have a sore or anything, a cut that uh, exposes them to the outside world, you need to make sure that you've got all your antibiotics and antiseptics on it. 
the best thing, if you don't know what it is, if it's just a standardized cut where you scraped yourself and it's bleeding, go for the triple ointment, sometimes Bactrocin it's known as, but the Chinese sell it here in the dollar store as triple antibiotic ointment. It has three different ingredients. Between the three, they kill almost any airborne baddie. So have tons of that nearby. If you haven't ransacked the dollar store for it, you should use that. Just slather it on there once a day and make sure that you don't allow any cut you have to progress any further. There just may be no one to help. So for right now, you have to make sure to minimize what we would refer to as your exposure from any cut or injury. Number two is going to be sort of uh, an accompanying to that. What about your teeth? What about your teeth? You cannot right now take the risk of getting a toothache. There are horrible stories out of the Old West of miners and all sorts of cowboys that would be out, let's say, in the middle of nowhere and get a really horrible toothache. And the truth is that some of them found it absolutely unbearable and shot themselves in the head. We have to make sure that you don't get yourself in a position like that because there just may be no dentist very shortly. In fact, it is possible that there are no dentists now, and I just don't know it. So you want to be on top of all of your teeth issues, your dental issues, you want to brush six times a day, not three normally. This is urgent times. And you want to make sure that you floss. I noticed dental floss seems to be one of the subtle uh, entities that is disappearing very, very rapidly. So stock up on dental floss. And if you have that dental pick, as long as we have electricity, which there's no guarantee as to how long that'll be, Use that dental pick, get your teeth as clean as possible. You have no shortage of time, so just spend all the time you can cleaning your teeth because you have to make sure. We don't know how long this is going to go. You may not see a dentist for the next five years. So you have to make sure that you do not come down with a toothache. And you know what that entails. You've just got to clean your teeth, floss them, and water pick them. Uh, 20, 25 times a day. No, not, not 25 times a day, but a lot. Let's move on to cheery topic number three. You want to make sure that you keep your shoes outside. Shoes are disgusting and filthy. All those Asian uh, cultures that where they make you leave your shoes outside, that's a real good idea because they are disgusting and they track in all sorts of dirt The truth is, the dirt is the good part. The bad part is they track in fecal matter, which is all over the ground. And the sad part is that we have now found out that fecal matter, yes, is one of the ways that the coronavirus is transferred. It's one of the main ways. It looked to be, I saw a listing of uh, popularity, and it looked like it was number four. So you don't want to be anywhere near any fecal matter at all, at least human fecal matter. And the way you do that is you leave your shoes outside. We don't even do what some families do, which is bring them inside and put them in a little tray inside the door. No, we're going to leave them on a tray outside the door. All shoes are kept outside. Going along with that is, if you're like me, I'm in a hotel room, That carpet down there is disgusting. You do not know all the horrible things that people have done on that carpet. So you are not going to walk barefoot in any room where you have not cleaned the floor yourself. So if you're in a hotel room like myself, or if you're in your house, you want to make 1,000% sure. I know that's not possible. You want to make 100% sure that that carpet is clean if you intend to walk barefoot. Safer, just buy yourself some slippers. Costco's got great deals. I saw $9.99 for the ones that are made out of memory foam. I saw $19.99 for a little higher quality one made out of memory foam. I was in Macy's. They had two different models at $14.99 for memory foam slippers. You need those. Get those for your house, for all your kids, because their feet are going to be walking through horrible things 
if you are, especially if you're in like a hotel, a friend's apartment, that carpet down there has got urine, it's got fecal matter, it's got possibly some old vomit, it's got all sorts of horrible things in it. You just want to make sure they don't end up on the bottom of your feet, which gets them onto your sheets, which gets them up to your mouth. Walk around in slippers and wash your feet all the time. If your feet come in touch with the ground where you're not wearing slippers or those cute little white socks, wash your feet. And when I say wash your feet, the traditional thought is, how about just soap and water? Well, soap and water is good. I find washing your feet with soap and water is difficult. I would much rather use a chemical, a sanitizer. Well, the sanitizer is out of commission, yes, but if you have any hand sanitizer, it works as foot sanitizer too. Do that with your feet every last time they come in contact with the ground, okay? And for Jeez sake, don't walk outside barefoot. Never walk outside barefoot. Right now, there's all sorts of terrible things on the ground. Don't go near it. That's going to get a lot worse, but we're going to save that for another show. How about number four? This is my personal opinion, but I think it's serious, and I don't think there's any more serious time we've ever faced than now. Don't pray. Do not pray. Do not pray or do anything other superstitious, religious, anything like that. And the reason is this. There's a temptation to let up on how well we take care of ourselves and take care of the ugly duties that we're going to have to be doing. Well, if you're praying, you're going to have that safety net and say, well, you know what, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to wash my feet 10 times today. I'm just going to pray and let God take it. No, 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 don't do that. Don't pray, don't give yourself an out, and instead do wash your feet 12 times a day. Don't give yourself any possible hidden motivation to not do everything possible. There are things you can do during this quarantining period. You can be busy your entire waking time making your family safer, okay? Uh, You certainly could do the ridiculous uh, wash your hands. You notice I didn't say that here because I know everybody is so tired of hearing wash your hands for 20 seconds with soap and water. If there's no soap and water. One of the interesting questions there, I'm sure you've thought about this yourself. If soap and water is the number one most effective way of getting rid of the virus, And supposedly these chemical sanitizers, I've got one right here, is second best. So they always say, well, if you can't get to soap and water, use the chemical sanitizer. Then why in the stores is there no shortage of soap? Every place you go, there's tons of soap. There's just shortages on the chemical sanitizers. Why is that? I think there's a reason. I think people have somewhere come up with a theory or information that says that we're being lied to and that, in fact, the sanitizer is much more effective than the soap. Another possibility is people have outsmarted that terrible advice and said that, well, if I'm in Costco, I don't have a soap and water in front of me. So if I touch a package there and I think, oh, boy, it felt sticky. Somebody just got done touching this, I don't have soap and water, but I do have my little bottle of high five anytime hand sanitizer. I heard some terrible, 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 terrible advice the other day. Uh, You know, I didn't hear it actually. I read it on the internet and it was some doctor saying, no, she started with the stupid question, If alcohol kills the virus, why can't I just drink the virus away? She answered that, but then she said, and you can't take the vodka either to wash your hands with because vodka is only 40% uh, alcohol. Well, she does not know what she's talking about because yours truly, when this whole thing started, went out and bought two bottles of Everclear. What's Everclear? Everclear is vodka made somewhere. I don't know. But it's 60% alcohol. There is some controversy whether 60 or 70% alcohol is needed to 
ensure that your hands are coronavirus free, but I've got two bottles of them.